Welcome to the screening of A Taxi to the Dark Side. It's an Oscar award-winning film by Alex Gibney about a man named Delwar. It's about his capture and detention in Bagram Air Base. He was designated a puck, person under control, number 421. Dilwar was an ordinary taxi driver when he was arrested. And soon after, he was beaten to death. There were four boxes and she took the box for homicide. I said, my God, they've killed him. Taxi to the Dark Side tells not only Dilwar's story, but the stories of countless others who were tortured in US-run detention centers, including Cuban-based Guantanamo Bay and the Iraqi prison Abu Ghraib. But I couldn't physically take three steps in any direction. Filmmaker Alex Gibney interviewed interrogators and prison guards, military police and lawyers. Name me one time in the last 500 years when we've had someone in custody with a ticking time bomb. To investigate the widespread network of abuses that the Bush administration put in place after 9-11. And you just kind of chain them up like that, out to the sides like this. Ultimately, the film explores the chaos, confusion, and fear that haunted the American psyche and jeopardized the rule of law. We have to work sort of the, the dark side, if you will. We're going to spend time in the shadows and in the intelligence world. Uh, a lot of what needs to be done here will have to be done quietly without any discussion. Documenting this kind of torture it's obviously controversial, but do you think it could have a ne negative effect? It's one thing to hear someone say, oh, you know, torture is going on in, in Bagram, and it's quite another to actually look at the photos. Those are, you know, emotionally charged images. And so, yeah, I mean, it's certainly, certainly a concern. Even many soldiers had said to me afterwards, was it hell, if you weren't a terrorist when you came in here, by the time you leave, I'm sure you would be because of the way you've been treated. Generally, when, when you watch the news these days, they try to avoid putting these pictures because the public just becomes revolted at the sight of, of dead men. Do you think that the photographs were the most powerful element of the film? I do believe so, because they are the most humane of all. They spoke about how the men kept yelling Allah. You know, that was very moving. A man, and he's, he's being tortured, and he's moaning and he's yelling. He all could think about his, his God. My hands and legs were shackled, and I was physically carried into the back of the vehicle. I didn't see my family again after that point. The torture part was obviously horrific, but that's horrific in an obvious way, but I think the way that those people justified it, they believed it so deeply, it's just kind of scary, I think. You, you want to start pushing the limits. You want to see how far you can go. To sit there and do this at those pictures is horrible. And you have the choice to say yes or no, it's wrong, it's right. All of those things that I did that I would consider harsh techniques or violating the Geneva Conventions, I was told to do. I don't know, I don't like the movie. <laughs> Why not? So I really don't want to talk about it. No, but why don't you like it? Everyone um, else has said that. I think that if they involved more of the father, more of the actual indirect people, like the, the wife who is husbandless and the daughter who is fatherless, I think they should have put more into that instead of politicians arguing about whose fault this is and soldiers talking about we did what we thought we had to do. He took us out on a journey and he showed us his perception of what the issue is. It's his perception. What would you have done differently? I would have included more footage on what caused the Americans to think this way. What changed for them from believing in their self-righteousness so much to them transforming to this creature that uh, changes Ben's rules to its will. He was only permitted to sleep four hours a day from 7 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock in the morning. And that lasted for 50 days with one exception. Whenever I see these kinds of films, I'm I don't know, kind of disheartened, because I feel like they're speaking to the choir. And I wonder if the people that it really matters, which is the Rumsfeld, who basically lives, he lives maybe 20 minutes from my house in Chicago. And, um, you know, I wonder if he's ever going to see this film. These are among the most dangerous, best trained, vicious killers on the face of the earth. Does it change people mainly to watch these documentaries? Or do they just watch them and then go numb home? As good as this movie was, as much emotion as it can evoke, uh, it doesn't really mean anything if it isn't shown to enough people. Real political change uh, is by far more influential than the cinema because at the end of the day, when a law is signed, that affects a huge portion of some type of constituency. One by one, the terrorists are learning the meaning of American justice. 
Do you think you've ever had your opinion changed by a political law that's been passed? Same way that perhaps you were by this film? I don't think so. Why? No. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm a very opinion, opinionative person. <laughs> and, and when I see politics and, and political figures on TV or on the news, for some reason I don't relate to them. I don't consider them an ordinary person like me. You know what I mean? So I think the film did it in a way that maybe had never done it before. One of the strangest things, requests I've ever had during the time I was in incarceration, and that was, would I be willing to stand up as a witness uh, for the prosecution in a trial against these soldiers? And I thought, how ironic this is, you know. <laughs> is this the only court that I'm going to get to see uh, after all these years in incarceration? I think films like this make you question, like, wow, like, things are being allowed that wouldn't have been allowed earlier. It's like a slippery slope. American values are premised upon the notion of human dignity and the sanctity of the individual. To allow for cruelty to be applied as a matter of official policy is to say that our forefathers were wrong about these inalienable rights.